and prominent Trump supporter Scott Baio allegedly attacked at an event at his daughter's school? What's going on? Let's ask, have Scott now. Joining me now, actor and outspoken supporter of President-elect Donald Trump, Scott Baio. All right, Scott, you came out on this show supporting Donald Trump. You actually speak at the convention. And you come on after the election and you think it's over. But this week, you're at your daughter's holiday Christmas party at school. And Bailey, your daughter's nine years old. You come out, you're minding your own business, and all of a sudden, Somebody attacks you, allegedly, this hot chili peppers drummer's wife, she comes at you, allegedly, and because you're a Trump supporter. What happened? Right. Uh, I, I, can't, I don't want to talk about what happened, Judge, because it's a pending investigation, but listen, I, I, quite honestly, I, I, don't, I don't need to be here tonight, nor do I want to be. It has nothing to do with you. I love you. But I've got a lot going on. I got a lot going on. My my mom died ten days ago, three days oh, before this so event sorry. happened at my kid's school. Oh, I've got a I've got a young boy, family member, he's six years old. He's got a very aggressive leukemia. I got a lot going on, so I don't I don't need this. But I felt like I should come on because this this has got to stop. I I, I should I should not be put in a position where. I'm afraid for my life and the life of my nine-year-old daughter because of my political beliefs, right? We, we won the election. And I didn't say boo in 08 or 12. I didn't say boo, but we won the election. And to quote the great President Barack Obama, elections have consequences. consequences. We won. You lost. Grow the blank up. <laughs> Move on with your life. He's the president elect, and he'll be president on January 20th. Grow, grow up, be a man, be a woman. It's over. And, 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 and stop this madness with all of your antics of Russia and whatever other silly goofball arguments you want to come up with. All right, now Scott, look, I know you and you were very clear you don't want to talk about the facts and I understand that. But but you and I agree. It isn't necessarily about this and the, you know, LA is seriously considering charging this woman and based on the facts as as that that are already out, that are already published that your daughter actually had to cover her ears because of the language that was being used by the wife of this chili peppers drummer allegedly, uh and the cursing and the physical abuse that went on because you're a Trump supporter, this is symptomatic of a bigger issue issue. And finally, what we've got to try to figure out is what is it about the left that makes them think that they have the right to control America? Uh, I, I, think, I think that the core belief of liberals in this country is, is some sense of entitlement, that they're entitled to power. I don't know what they base it on, I think maybe because they all watch their own news and it becomes this very sort of vicious cycle where they believe their own press. Um, I, I just, here's, here's the one positive thing about this, in my opinion. I think now, for the first time, the American people are getting to see what these people are really like. Mm -hmm. They are uh, uh, d despicable human beings, a lot of them. They are. Not all of them. Oh, I, my, my agent I, is a dear friend of mine, and I love him like a brother. He's a hardcore liberal. I play golf with him. I love him. I hang out with him. We go to dinner. We talk politics. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of these people, there's a sense of an, an entitlement, and, and I don't know where it comes from, but the American people are now seeing what, what's going on. I mean, you look at that poor man that voted for Trump that was pulled out of his car and beaten yes, up. beaten. You know, it, it's gotten to the point where... I hope Trump, when Trump gets in there, that he shuts all this down by, by allowing the police to do their job. I think that's going to happen. And Scott Baio, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I know you didn't want to do it, but I think it's important for it to be done. And I hope Bailey uh, is okay and our condolences to you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. And the best of the year in street justice is next. Don't move. I...
Furniture's holiday sale with door buster savings store wide. Plus, ho, ho, hold on to your cash and put zero, zilch, zip, nothing down. Seven piece living room, two ninety nine. Nine piece bedroom with free mattress for New York Times, BBC World News, America anchor Caddy Kay, and Jeff Greenfield, a contributor for Politico magazine. Welcome all, Yamish. What struck you the most about the Podesta interview? What struck me most was the fact that he sounded really flustered when you asked him about Wisconsin and you asked him about their decision making within the campaign. While, of course, Russia is important and, of course, the fact that Hillary Clinton. First, my opening statement. The left has been telling you for years what you can eat, what you should say, and now how you should feel. Take a listen to Michelle Obama. Yes, I do, because we feel the difference now. Yeah. See, now we're feeling what not having hope feels like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hope is necessary. It's, it's a necessary concept. What else do you have if you don't have hope? Really? This from a woman who in 2008, at 44 years old, said for the first time in her life she was proud of her country when her husband was running for president. And now, eight years later, you're out of hope, Michelle? You've lived a life few can even imagine at the citadel of power and prestige in the world. You and your husband, blessed by God and the American people with the unique and historic opportunity to not only lead America from that shining place on a hill, but impact Americans and give them hope that virtually no others can. And now that you're leaving, Hope is gone? Since when does hope rise and fall with you and Barack in the White House? But it doesn't end there. When asked if your husband's administration achieved his promise of hope to Americans, your answer? A resounding yes. Quote, especially in times of crisis and turmoil. Are you kidding? Did your husband give hope to the parents of James Foley or Stephen Sotloff, who was in custody for over a year while his family was told they could not negotiate because they'd be prosecuted before their son's heads were chopped off? To try to convince America that once you and Barack exit the White House, hope is removed for America is an outrage. And I'll tell you what else is an outrage. An outrage is when your husband struts up to the microphone at a national prayer breakfast and tells Christians to get off their high horses because the Christians are afraid of Muslim terrorists cutting their heads off. And I'd say that that was a crisis, but no hope there. ISIS today only looms larger. And by the way, Michelle, have you heard of San Bernardino, Orlando, or that workplace violence that happened at Fort Hood in Texas? In times of crisis and turmoil, like the 13 hours those heroes were on a rooftop in Benghazi, your all-powerful husband never bothered to explain to us where he was and what he was doing that night. All we know is the only power that he was ready to unleash was Air Force One to fly to Las Vegas for a fundraiser the next morning so that you guys could live the life another four years in the White House. But I get it. For you, hope is gone. You and your family and friends won't be able to fly to another 46 countries with security and hair and makeup in tow. Michelle, you may not realize it, but Americans rejected you and everything you stand for. They know what hope is. Hope is when people 30,000 at a time stand in line in the cold with their children, hoping to get the glimpse of a man that they think can change the course of their lives from the downward spiral that you and Mr. Hope and Change have put them on. 
I'll tell you what hope and change is. Hope and change is when people show up 20,000 strong after an election, desperate to see the man who actually brought back jobs, almost a thousand, when your husband said it was impossible to bring them back at Carrier. And by the way, if you want to know what it really feels like to not have hope, just walk out of the White House. As ordinary Americans, you'll see real fast. Welcome to the America you created, the one with a racial divide, a disrespect of law enforcement and the military, illegals cruising our borders, draining our schools and social services, ISIS and refugees on the rise. No hope? Michelle, I'm surprised at you. What happened to when they go low, we go high? And that's my opening statement. The president says that he was aware of this during the election, but chose not to do anything other than tell uh, Putin to knock it off. And uh, then a month later, he basically comes back and says, uh, you know, we've got to do this. We've got to get this thing uh, investigated completely. And, you know, if he does wrap this up, this uh, investigation, what exactly can he do to Russia? Well, Judge, one, one correction here. He actually did more than just tell Putin to knock it off. He actually talked to Mitch McConnell and uh, Speaker Ryan and asked them to do a joint statement in early October, and Mitch McConnell shut him down because he thought he, he, he knew it wasn't going to help Donald Trump to let the world know that Putin was trying to make him president. So, uh, you know, as for what, what the president can do, I think part of it is he needs a, he, we need to figure out some back-channel operations that we can do well, against Putin. this is against a president who signs, you know, executive orders all the time. He doesn't usually need the other side but uh, well, you know you so would have been calling it poli partisan politics if he had done that himself and so instead he stood down and look what happened we're now gonna have a, a Putin puppet in the White then House. Why did he wait a month after the election to call for an investigation and why on <laughs> November 17th did Clapper say they couldn't connect it to Russia? Well, and, and since then, they've said that they can connect it to Russia. At, the FBI agrees with them. All of the 17 intelligence agencies agree with the CIA's assessment. So listen, at the end of the day, the question is, is why don't you care that a foreign government it very well was trying to intrude in this election and, and it really do a 9-11 style assault on American democracy? Can you tell That's me, Neil, abhorrent. exactly how they tried to intrude? That's by leaking the emails yeah, by that leaking, no by leaking the information. of? Yeah, it's, it, this is a classic Russian compromat operation where they're leaking embarrassing information to try to get folks like us talking about it on television and distracting voters from the real issues, which were the bigoted and divisive agenda that, that uh, Donald Trump was running right, on throughout David, the campaign. let's hear it. <laughs> you know, it finally, the Democrats are finally talking about it could be a national security issue, though their main talking point is still that uh, Russia tried to influence our elections, which first it was Jim Comey, then it was the Electoral College, now it's, now it's Russia. I mean, next week, Judge, it's going to be the Mercury retrograde of September that caused uh, Hillary Clinton to lose the election a couple days ago. I mean, it's going to be a new excuse as to why Hillary Clinton lost. Oh, and, on. you know, it, it's their therapy to get through, and they should do that. Now, is uh, Russia potentially hacking the U.S. a national security threat? Yeah. Yes. yes. And of should we be looking into it? Yes, we should be looking to it. Is it the reason Hillary Clinton lost? No. Okay. Oh, there's lots of reasons why Hillary Clinton lost, not the least of which is she ran a campaign that got close enough that Russian interference could have played a factor. But at the end of the day, there, well, if you, well, you Neil, know what, Neil, you Neil, Neil, accept the fact that had Hillary Clinton not written those emails, had Podesta not written those emails, had she not had a private serf, server, had she not oh. been a terrible candidate, that's why she would have lost. This I would is love garbage to have seen what that Republican the Democrats turnout continue been like to throw this out If the out other there. side had leaked that kind of emails, if you, if the other, if the Republican Republican emails had been out there, I would have loved to see what Republican turnout would have been, because it would have been a disaster. You guys had a knife fight on your side over and over no. again, and everyone knew what a fraud Donald Trump was from the very start, and those a emails fraud? would have been delicious to read. Really? America yeah. seemed to reject Hillary Clinton as a fraud with the Clinton Foundation, yeah. which, as I understand it, is still under active investigation. Yeah, Hil I Hil wouldn't throw that word around Hillary too freely. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, well, let's move on. Let's talk about Rex Tillerson. What do you think is going to happen with him? Uh, 
not Neil. What do I think is going to happen with him? I mean, listen, I, I, this goes back to the Russian emails. This is a guy who's close to Putin. This is a, a God's gift to, to Russia, basically, to have Rex Tillerson in there. This is someone who is very close to Putin. And uh, we'd expect him to be the similar sort of, uh, do the same sort of appeasement that Donald Trump has done David? over the course of his campaign. David? Yeah. You know, it was my understanding that our top diplomat was supposed to be able to have make allies with foreign nations, was supposed to be able to represent America's view to foreign nations, and was supposed to get the best deal possible. All the things Rex Tillerson has done. And to suggest that somehow uh, he doesn't understand, as a CEO, who ultimately the boss is, which is the President of the United States, and it is the President's agenda who he will be representing to foreign nations, is somewhat laughable. And it's why, at the end of the day, Rex Tillerson will ultimately be approved, including getting Democrat votes, because you already hear folks like Joe Manchin talking about how he's going to vote for him. Listen, Rex Tillerson has made a career glad handing tyrants and ignoring. Glad handing uh, tyrants? That's what he's done. Obama that's how he's made billions the of dollars for Exxon Mobil. $150 billion. No. Well, we'll see. we'll see how he comports himself in office. If he's actually going to stand up for human rights when he's uh, looked the other way over and over again in his career. And when he's, when he's directly ignored uh, State Department uh, requirements at, 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 in international trade. That's the kind uh, of person I that we're judging. Someone who's over and over again ignored. It is laughable, it is laughable after the last seven years over to hear, hear a Democrat guys. talk about.